Hello everyone, my name is Mara and today's case is about Ryan Larson, who is only 11 years old, when he went missing from La Vista, Nebraska in May of 2021. I want to go ahead and remind everyone that I try to get the most accurate information and do the best research I can for every single case that I cover. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's case. Ryan Larson was born on June 8th of 2009 to his mom, Tammy Larson. And in 2021, he was in sixth grade at La Vista West Elementary in La Vista, Nebraska. Ryan's father was never a part of his life, and he did have three older sisters who were moved out. He also was said to enjoy building things with Legos, cardboard, and tape. This is a picture of him and his mom, Tammy. She said he was super helpful and he had a big heart and imagination. And I thought this was so sweet. So if he was behaving and doing well in school, they would let him choose a reward of what he wanted to do. And his choice was to help the janitor. He would help him take out the trash, help in the lunchroom. He just overall seems like such a sweet boy. Ryan is deeply loved and cared about by his family and friends. Ryan does have autism, which affects the way he communicates and interacts with others, which made him very prone to anxiety and stress. And his way of dealing with this anxiety and stress was just to get up and remove himself from the situation and walk away. He was prescribed a range of medications because he also has Tourette's and epilepsy. Ryan and his mother lived in the Southfield apartments that are about two blocks away from the school that he was going to. On May 17th of 2021, he went to school. It seemed like it overall started as a completely normal day when he was working on a math problem at school and he became extremely frustrated. And because Ryan was known to walk away, he was supposed to be supervised by an adult at all times throughout the school day. This day, I guess the supervisor had to go and help somebody else or go do something else. So he was left alone. And the replacement that was supposed to take over for this person was late. So between 11.55 a.m. and 12.05 p.m., he was left completely unsupervised. And like I said before, when he felt anxiety, his way to deal with it was to go and walk away from the situation. So between this time, Ryan ends up leaving the school. At 12.27 p.m., the school calls Tammy to let her know that they cannot find Ryan. Two minutes later, the school then calls 911, and police arrive five minutes after that to begin to search for him. And in the past, there had been multiple times that Ryan had walked off. It was said because he did walk off so often, the police in the area had gotten to know Ryan very well in the two years before he went missing. In the other times in the past, they were able to find him and bring him home. This same day at around 1.45 p.m., Ryan is seen back at the Southfield apartments where he lives with his mom, but since he does not have a key, he's not able to get into the apartment. This person that seen him last said he was holding an umbrella. Prior to him disappearing, some of his searches online included how to hide underground, how to avoid being spotted, and how to hide from the police. More than six weeks after his disappearance, his umbrella was found by a dumpster in the building that they lived in. And... If they were searching, I guess I'm not really sure why it took this long. In December of 2022, an affidavit was notarized. His mother was included in this filing. This said that the La Vista police were no longer pursuing an active investigation and that they handed the case to Omaha PD cold case unit because they believe that any progress in this case at this point would be recovery efforts. On January 10th of 2023, Tammy filed a petition to have Ryan presumed dead. The petition states the missing individual, Ryan Larson, due to his autism diagnosis and other medical conditions, was exposed to a specific peril or tragedy, resulting in probable death under circumstances that may be proved by clear and convincing evidence. The petition also places fault on the school and the school district, saying that an employee, I guess, saw him leave, but no immediate action was taken to prevent him from leaving the school. I also don't get if um, somebody seen him leaving, why they didn't immediately call the police. If him and the police are very close and they're like, okay, you know, it's just kind of another typical day kind of thing where the police know him, they're like, okay, we'll go pick him up. Or even why, if an adult seen him leaving, why did they not follow him 
to make sure that he's okay. He's still only 11. Tammy also says that she intends to file a claim against Papillion La Vista schools, saying the personal injury and death were caused by the negligence or wrongful act of the school district. In Nebraska, a person can be pronounced dead after five years, um, after being missing for five years is I guess what I should say, but they filed this petition to see if it can be done sooner. On February 21st of 2023, Tammy and her attorneys appeared in court to ask for a death declaration for Ryan. A 35-minute hearing proceeded, and his mom testified about her son's disabilities. She explained how all of this makes it impossible for him to be able to take care of himself. Her attorneys also brought up how they searched for Ryan for weeks with no sign of him or where he could be. They also brought up how he cannot swim, so if he ended up near water, things could end very badly. The closest they had to a lead was when a cadaver dog led them to a nearby recreation area that was actually near water. They say because Ryan was exposed to these presumed dangers, the court should presume him dead. They also asked for this ruling to be made now and not in multiple years. Ryan's family wants to be able to hold school officials accountable for what happened to him. The judge said that they'll take it under advisement and they did not end up making a decision at this hearing. But I want to hear everyone else's opinion. Do you think that Ryan will be found? What do you think happened to him? And do you think that the school should be held accountable for what happened? I have seen a bunch of mixed opinions and people putting their opinion out there. And also, in a lot of ways, I mean, it's up to his family what they want to do and how they want to deal with all of this. So if getting him presumed dead so they can get some type of closure and hold the school officials accountable, I can understand that. But you also just want to believe that he's possibly out there somewhere and okay, and that he'll be found and be able to come home. All I hope at the end of the day is that this family is able to get some closure, um, some answers, however that may be, because no one should have to sit here and wonder if their child is okay. He just overall seemed like he was a really great kid. But I think that's all I have today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe, comment, and I will see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.